Welcome to this third part on a series of characteristic subgroups. In this video, we will show that the Frutini subgroup of a group is characteristic in the group. We will also show that if G is a finite group, P is a Celo P subgroup of G that is normal, then P is characteristic in G. So recall that H is a characteristic subgroup of G if H is fixed by all of the automorphisms of G. Recall from part one that in practice, to show H is characteristic in G, it suffices to show that alpha of H is contained in H for an arbitrary automorphism alpha of G. We will use this fact to establish that the Frattini subgroup of group G is characteristic in G. So with that in mind, we define the Frattini subgroup of a group G to be the intersection of all maximal subgroups of G, where M is a maximal subgroup of G if it's a proper subgroup of G, i.e. a subgroup not equal to G, such that there exists no subgroup N of G with N a proper subgroup of G and M a proper subgroup of N. Another way of saying this is M does not equal G and whenever there is a subgroup N of G, such that M is a subgroup of N, we must have that either N equals M or N equals G. We will now show that the Frattini subgroup of group G is characteristic in G. First note that if G has no maximal subgroups, for instance, if G is the infinite cyclic group, and in this case, the Frattini subgroup of G is taken to be G itself. And as G is always characteristic in G, any automorphism of G fixes G, then we have that in this case, the Frattini subgroup is characteristic G. So now assume that G has at least one maximal subgroup M. Let alpha be an automorphism of G. This is an isomorphism of G to itself. We claim that alpha of M is also a maximal subgroup of G. First note that alpha of M is certainly a subgroup of G because the image of a subgroup under a group homomorphism yields another subgroup. It remains to show that alpha of M is a maximal subgroup of G. We do this as follows. Suppose N is a subgroup of G and alpha M is a subgroup of N. Then applying alpha inverse to all of these yields M is a subgroup of alpha inverse of N, which is a subgroup of G. We note that because M is a maximal subgroup of G by assumption, this says that alpha inverse of N either equals M or equals G. Now if we apply alpha to both sides of these, we get that N equals alpha M or N equals G. In other words, alpha M is a maximal subgroup of G. Now, note that because alpha was an arbitrary automorphism of G, alpha inverse is an automorphism of G, so we have that alpha inverse of M is also a maximal subgroup of G. And what this says is, it says that if we compose alpha with its inverse and apply it to M, and alpha inverse with alpha and apply it to M, we just get M back. So, in other words, what alpha is doing here, it's actually permuting the maximal subgroups of, of G. Now we use this fact to conclude that the Frattini subgroup of G is a characteristic subgroup of G. So let X be an element in the Frattini subgroup of G. Then by definition, X is contained in the intersection of all of the maximal subgroups of G. To conclude, that the Frattini subgroup is characteristic in G, we need to show that alpha of X is contained in the Frattini subgroup of G. We have that alpha of X is contained in alpha of the intersection of all of the maximal subgroups of G. Then, by basic set theory and functions, this is contained in the intersection of all of the alpha M's, where M is the maximal subgroup of G, but we've just shown that the collection of all of these alpha m's just equals 
the collection of all of the maximal subgroups of G, all of the M's. So, in other words, alpha of X is contained in the intersection of all of the maximal subgroups of G, which just equals the Fratini subgroup of G. So we've shown that the Fratini subgroup of G is characteristic in G.